Mabuhay, kapatids. My name is Stephanie. And my name is Aimee. And welcome to the Babaylan Bruja Book Club podcast. We have come together in efforts to decolonize our minds, our bodies, and reconnect with spirit by ways of relation via conversation of education, interpretation, and integration. So this is our invitation for you to join us on our journey as we discuss works from honored artists, authors, and thought leaders from the Philippinex diaspora. Quick disclaimer, we want to acknowledge that everyone is consciously where they need to be. And we are not experts, but we are sharing our own unique lived experiences. Welcome, and thank you again for joining us in this conversation. Before we enter in, as always, let's take a moment to ground and to come into the present. So no matter what you're doing today, right now, whether you find yourself commuting to work or taking a walk or having a coffee break or washing the dishes, no matter what you're doing, let's take a pause together and take a deep inhale. And exhale. Ground yourself by using your senses to notice this present moment because it is a gift. Your feet on the ground, the breath in your lungs, take in the sights around you and bring gratitude to this moment no matter what you have been feeling today. And as we open this conversation, as always, in gratitude, we acknowledge the ancestors of this land. For me, I am on the ancestral meeting lands of the Shawnee, Wyandotte, Miami, and Delaware people in Ohio. For Stephanie, that is the Bay, Miwok, Yokut people in the Bay Area, California. And we acknowledge them knowing we cannot do our own remembrance and decolonization work without mentioning their names and honoring their ancestral and modern day presence. We also acknowledge in gratitude your ancestors and our ancestors, guides, spirit, source, and all the circumstances that have brought us to this present moment today. So thank you again for tuning in and joining us. And we feel and acknowledge your presence no matter wherever and whenever you're tuning in. Well, thank you, sis, for that beautiful opener. I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Thank you. Um, we are going to move into, as always, an overview of the chapter, and then um, we'll pick our, we'll talk about our vocab words and quotes, and then we'll close out. Sound good? So thank you all for coming back. Thank you for clicking on that YouTube link, whether you're being nosy or you're really <laughs> reading the book or you really they like they're like, what are the what do these bitches look like? What do these right. blue hearts look like? You want to check out our earrings today? You that know, sis changed earring. hers. I'm feeling the I felt very pinky today, so um <laughs> Um, thank either way. Thank you for thank you for being here. Thank you for giving us your time, your energy, um, your attention, even just for however long that feels right for you. Yes. So, um, chapter four, and we're back. We finished our study break. If y'all are interested in that, what's a study break, sis? Would you like to share with them? Well, a study break is so the, the book what we're going through is very textbooky. It's very rich. There's a lot yeah. of information. I, I love it. But also we're trying to balance the energies of being really serious and very studious versus like, you know, when you're studying with your friend at the library and then you just take mm -hmm. a break and then you just like chat like yes. that. So that's our study breaks. So we just we do a little chit chat and y'all again can be nosy and listen in on our conversations. <laughs> but hopefully we bring something that like. Our hope is to bring something that something encourages people, makes people think as well. So there we go. Something. Yeah. And if you're interested in what we're talking about, you can check out the channel. It should be underneath. It's like, this is our second one. No. Second. It's going to be our third, our third one. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we're going to continue to kind of release this format um, if we feel called. And um, it's, it's only 30 minutes. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> if you want to listen to that or while you're driving, we have the driving safe version on our platform, Spotify. <laughs> yeah. um, what is it? What else are the other places? Everything else except Apple because they still haven't approved us yet because I don't wow, know. Apple, you can play it. And we, and we got all these Apple products. Right. Yeah. So if any, but if anybody knows how to do that, if any of you work at Apple, Yes, we're we're in the we're in the midst of sending out a job description call. <laughs> we need a sound engineer. We look at yes. <clears throat> if you're interested and you have the capacity and the bandwidth, holla at Babylon Bruja Book Club on Instagram. Mm. Uh, we should post our in, we should post our emails too for any. We group. should yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll send you a body butter a month. <laughs> Oh, okay. you onto something, sis? I'll subscribe. <laughs> I can't wait to, to do a, a review. Well, I told you this already, though. Yes, you're um, my body butter. <laughs> yes. So chapter four um, was called To Our Lola's House, A Pilgrimage to the Place of Beginnings. Um, and it was very beautifully written. This one touched me in particular. Um, just because, you know, um, rest in peace, my Lola, my mama, I call her mama. I call my mom's grandparents Lola Lolo, and I call my dad's parents Mama Papa for some reason. But um, my mama or Lola, she just passed um, mm. in January. And yeah. this was very beautiful to just share. Um, so thank you. Um, call Tito Ceres. Ceres. Yeah. Tio Quinto. Um, and his name was really... Uh, designed interestingly I love how Filipino it made me think of like Filipinos how they make creative names they do for their kids um, and so it's on the first page y'all can see it but yeah his grandparents name were Eusebio and e Eugenio and actually my grandpa my Lolo's name was Eusebio it's oh. a Filipino thing I'm sure and they took the initials of the names of the grandparents and made his name I know that's really Cool. yeah i think that's special so thank you uh tito you when you wrote this you're 53 so um depending when this was published i don't remember the year um if you ever hear this thank you um and as well as your siblings amor jovi jo joarita yeah um, which was his siblings who wrote the wrote their memoirs of the um you know contribution um contribution what's the word i'm looking for i meant uh just like sharing their memories yeah yeah, yeah. like a celebration of her life and their memories that they yeah. had with her especially the babylon from i was honestly says if you don't know i don't the town i was looking for the town but they did mention bahau hilo monan patama and kamuga Kamugao, mm -hmm. uh, which looking up their areas encompassed by the mid and southern areas of the Philippines, like the Visaya okay. and the Mindanao area. Okay. Very close to like, I think south of Mindanao and west of, um, yeah, west of D Davao. Okay. So, cool. yeah, okay. this was, this was copyright in 20, sorry, you were asking about copyright. It's okay. 2010. So, Tito oh, Ceres is probably like 63 ish. Tito now. Lolo, you can Lolo. pick. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, respectful. Like this was yes, beautifully he, written. Yeah, I was like, he should be a writer. <laughs> it was beautiful, and it was like it was very much like memoir and written versus you know the previous chapters have been memoirs, but have been very rich and like it almost felt like a textbook kind of thing. Yeah. But this was more story, so that was, it was a nice. It was nice. Mm -hmm. yes and it, it made me be i'm wearing my lola's jewelry mm -hmm. the mama's jewelry so this is a way to connect and i yeah felt a connection it, 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 his writing touched me and the stories there there were i was like wow i'm hella american <laughs> like, you know what i mean like what do you mean why so go just say he, more just say hearing more. like um all the the siblings when they took their turns to tell stories like the detail the things that they remember that lola sebia which is mm -hmm. their lola mm -hmm. so you know thank you lola sebia for being in this space with us today it, um, yeah <laughs> i felt her presence through through um tito cerez's writing because yeah uh, he mentioned that his healing needed to go home and she was speaking through wherever he was in Germany, he's positioned in Germany, the German doctors were saying, go home. And so he was like, that's probably my Lola telling me to go home to get healed. Yeah. And I felt like that <clears> was <throat> like, 
something that hit me there. So either way, this is a compilation of all of the, you know, it's from Cerez, Amor, Jovi, and jo Jorita. Yeah. And um, it's about, it's a wonderful chapter of poignancy and hope. Did I say that right? Poignancy. Poignancy. It's a great word. And poignancy. Hope. And it's delightfully just telltales of these four and um, mainly Cerez, um, but you know, his courage to write it, especially as he was feeling isolated in Germany. I, mm -hmm. I want to just honor that because that, that felt, and for him to write it because he felt like he was having um, blockages. And so Tita Lenny was coaching him through it, which is interesting. Yeah, he was, he's part of the diaspora. He is, he is. Oh. And um, so, yeah, and um, I basically wanted to say that you know, this is just a capture of um, what he cites a lot, but by Len Rising, which is another book we can talk about, sis, by Aimee Cesara, who describes about violence as a public leader through her nurturing power. She safeguards the psychic e equilibrium of her community by ensuring that the deceased are honored and consulted, the sick are cured, and the future catastrophes are predicted and therefore prevented. Mm. Which is like a great summation of like all the details, <clears throat> which we'll we'll dive into. And if you read it, you know how um, detailed it went. And as a plant medicine enthusiast, oh, yes, like student slash student who have, we're forever students, right? But I was geeking out. I was like, that is what I know. I was like. I want to learn what, what was she, what were these, what was happening? Yeah. You know? Yeah. The ritual description and the medicines, how they made them all that stuff. Awesome. Sorry. I'm getting my water. Thank you. What did they say? Never say sorry for taking care of yourself. Yes. Thank you for, for pause, Cheers. letting me pause. Cheers. Mm. So yeah, that's why this chapter was really special to Lola story and <clears throat> my Lola and I'm working with cacao medicine lately yeah. and uh, ugh, yeah my heart was just cracked open mm. <laughs> so yeah well that's wonderful yeah my Lola passed in 2020 as well so mm. yeah how's your heart sis my heart is good it's good um as I read this chapter, there was just a lot of emotions just for the reasons because of the why, why he said he wrote it, you know, to connect and to find his like way back home. Mm -hmm. um, and that to find even the very first chapter, he says, that, you know, the one of the reasons he's writing this is to know that home isn't very far away. Right. Yeah. So I was like, oh. oh. Uh, yeah mm -hmm. so well thank you for sharing your hearts um do you want to move into vocab or what sure. are your how are you how is your heart how is your heart oh thanks for asking um my heart is i think through work i've been working on you know recalling those parts of my heart that have been broken, you know, and yeah. hurt just from daily, you know, we're, hum we're humans. Um, I've realized how expansive it is, how big of a heart I have and um, <clears throat> yes, sis. how I'm feeling, I'm feeling, filling those spaces um, that used to occupy other people or places or things and, and with me and, and my relationship to, you know, higher power. So that's my heart. That's, I've observed, I've, I wouldn't say observed, I've felt it. So it's just big. It just, you know, wants, it wants peace and love and it, it wants the, the, the chaos too at a, at a, at a healthy level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wants excitement. That's what it we wants. need. Ex yes. We need excitement. <clears throat> That's what the darkness is for, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's my heart today. I'm very I'm thankful. I had bro I had cacao with my parents this morning. That was special. Oh, I cut up a new block and um, had a little ceremony. My dad was like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "This is I'm making heart medicine, Dad." <laughs> mm. 
I'm not making it. I'm, I'm preparing it. Yeah. Like, now, you know, my dad, you know, love him. We have our relationship, but I was just like, now, you know, this is premium hot chocolate. <laughs> drink on. <laughs> did you dr- guys drink it together in, in Sarah? We did. I, I actually, I, we drank, I was sipping on it with them while um, we were they My mom was doing online church. So I left when some words were just not resonating with me, but I, there, there are some things during mass I still resonate with and I'd be yeah, like, mm-hmm. like, I'll, <laughs> like, yeah. you hear that? Jesus yeah. said, yeah. Jesus said, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah. So that was, that was my morning. And then I try to speed read this chapter, <laughs> but loved it. Loved it. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and thanks. I will, I will echo and say that your heart is very big. You have a very big heart. You're very loving. So it gets me in trouble. I mean, I mean, who's who's doesn't? We're human. I'm just, I'm, I'm recognizing more than ever. Yeah. If not now, right? How human as hell I am. I know. But also as divine. I yeah. Am, right. This human experience. I tell you what. I know, girl. Tell me about it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for asking, sis. Of course. I feel complete if you feel complete and we can move on to vocabulary. Vocabulary, huh? You okay. you can go you go first. I felt like I talked a lot though. You wanna switch up or you want me to go? You just go. Okay. But you go. It's in the flow. So, um look, see I I didn't even write the right page. <laughs> um, I picked Lanya, Lana, Lanya. Um, it's on page 139. Jorita? Um, yeah, I think it's Jorita. 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 Jojo. Jojo. Tita Jojo. Don't. Sorry in advance. Sorry, Tita Jo. What do they say in Tagalog? Like, uh, pasensya na, ha? Okay. We are very uh, millennial, huh? <laughs> um, but yes. So, Lanya um, is short for Lola Sabia's Hanturahan or Lanahan, which is a bottle, a healing bottle she brought with her wherever she was called to do healing or work. And it's filled with chopped bits and cases of medicinal plants and scraping of aromatic roots, seeds, dried leaves, and barks of medicinal trees soaked in coconut oil. Mm. And um, Jorita recalls um, helping Lola Sevia chop and grind the plants. And I thought this was really interesting because they referenced a couple of times um, grinding the barks and roots on her special parchment <clears throat> braider cut out of the dried skin of a stingray's tail, which was symbolic because i you know millennial again moana stingray the grandma yeah yeah and she passed um but i was just wondering too like what's the medicine behind a stingray's tail like why so anyways it's their first potent cure-all and homemade first aid remedy all the grandchildren keep a bottle and they actually what i thought was really beautiful is the legacy they create more and they pass it down yeah so I thought that was beautiful too. Also, this reminds me of, I'm sure you did this, sis. Like when you were little, right? In the backyard and you have, you get like a bowl or something and you put, like my daughter does this. She puts like rocks and like she'll just uh-huh. put rocks and, and crush up leaves and flowers and just like mix it up like it's a potion. Did you ever do that when you were little? You did. Your daughter's a bruja. I put it in water. I put it in water. Yeah, yeah, you put it, mix yeah. it up and put it in water and then, like, that's what it, it reminds me of. And it's just like, wow, that's, like, the old ways are in our, are, are inside of us, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you think of this word? I mean, what else? Uh, sorry. Anything else? Any other thoughts? Any other thoughts? I actually, okay, so this, I'm going off, I'm going off base. I'm going off topic but kind of on the same page. So last week during our study break, we had talked about healers 
getting an exchange for money, like getting an energy exchange of either money or barter, some sort of barter system when they heal. Yeah. So Lola Sibia on the same page on 139, like um, the second paragraph on the top, it says uh, that she didn't charge for her services. Mm -hmm. She never asked for payment nor charged anything for her services. This was taboo. Often though, her patients left money in gratitude, which she gladly accepted. But uh, early or during her entire healing practice, Lola never ever quoted any price for her healing menstruations. I was like, what though? Yeah. 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 I don't know. What do you, what are your thoughts? What do you, what are your thoughts on that? For, Cause for me, maybe it's just me, a millennial 2021. 20, I'm like, they should have been paying Lola. <laughs> Lola seven, you have a, you have a Venmo. <laughs> What's your cash app? This memo you for all the gen the years you didn't get your reparations, <laughs> right? Good. But, but then, but then, like in the culture, they people knew that they had to pay her, and in in some of the stories that like she came home with like a bunch of camote and like banana, yeah, yeah, like chickens, right? So yeah, so in a sense, she did get paid. Yeah, but yeah, it's just it, I don't know. It's just interesting. Hmm. It's just an interesting sort of the old ways versus the new ways because I mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I think what's coming through is that pre-colonial capitalism, you know, yeah, it was okay. really a village. It was really like a barter system. It was mm. really like a recognition of like the gifts you bring to the table and how that can be, whether, I mean, what is currency, right? Even when I work with cacao, cacao was actually treated as money for the Ma Mayans and Mesoamericans. Okay. That's what they used to pay yeah. for things. So think yeah. about like in the village, maybe that's what they used to, you know, give tomatoes because they didn't have money, you know? So abundance is like, what, oh, this is going deep, sis. I'm like, whatever's channeling is coming through, like this could be like, what do we define as currency? Like, what is currency? I guess it mm -hmm. asks us, what is, what is abundance? Like, what is currency in exchange for services? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. And so that, of course, though, you know, in the larger scale, the bigger picture, you know, you need money to go to the market and buy things. Sure. Um, but I think like them pre-colonialism, like they lived in villages and that was just it. Like I could walk down the street mm -hmm. in whatever time that was and ask her to heal me. And that was it. Cause there's how many people in the village, right? Cause you right. Know, we were, yeah. So I say that all to say, um, I think it's like the old way of like people giving money, right? Yeah. When she did receive currency, she's like, yeah, because she knew she had to go to the market or whatever. Yeah. So when she um, was, she, she accept, she gladly accepted it. She was like, okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. But this is the, I had a question too, because um, that was interesting. It, was on, it went to page. I know we're going off, but a little yeah, bit, but let's, let's go. Let's do it. Right. We're being guided. It. This is, the, this is the thing I've been sitting with too about scarcity mindset. Mm. You know, and I've been talking about it offline within our community because of Hiat, which brought, was brought up a lot yesterday mm -hmm. during um, the therapy night, um, just how our culture, we have a lot of Hiat, a lot of shame mm. uh, or like ill or like um, hesitation or embarrassment or shy. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because on page 146, um, I don't know who was, I think it's Tito Cerez, but he's narrating how his, he recalled when she would serve rice um, just because of like them living through the war years, you know, in the war years, you gotta be in scarcity mindset mm -hmm. as hell because it's mm -hmm. like, how do you know if you're gonna find food? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, any single grain of rice, mongo, drop of water, it was never wasted. And so even mm -hmm. when she would scoop the rice, she would, or when she cooked, she would wash the rice. It was almost ritualistic and ceremonial. And I was like, damn, I don't even do that. Like. <laughs> I'd, I'll be cook, I'll be like cleaning the rice and like I don't know one two rinses boom done you know like yeah. so American you yeah know? yeah 
But um, what was interesting that he said was that she would make sure not a single grain of cooked rice clung to the ladle because leaving crumbs of rice blooming on the ladle was a sin. And so I was just like taking what you're saying. Like, yeah. Is it scarcity or is it sacredness mm -hmm. mindset? Or is it both? It's probably both. I mean, that's always the answer, both and. <laughs> right. Honestly, that's always the answer. Why do you think both and? Um, about scarcity, it's scarcity mindset and, and sacred. And sacred. Mm -hmm. Meaning um, like she, you know, she didn't charge, she didn't ask for money for her services. And then this rice thing, how she like ritualistic with cooking it. She's like savoring, like, you know, during the war, they had very little supply. Yeah, yeah. And then also the scarcity mindset. Too. I don't know. I, maybe because she had scarcity. It's not just like a scarcity mindset. It was like actual scarcity because that's where scarcity mindset comes from was, is from an event where you were actually had scarcity. So maybe she's treating it with sacredness because she had scarcity. Do you know what I mean? Like there was a time when rice was scarce. And so now she's in a moment where it's not scarce, but she's, treating it as sacred because she understands that because uh, she's been without you know so she has a lot of uh, what is it called appreciation and gratitude for it you know yeah. and I think to the mindset behind yeah you know, pre-colonial or like just like in the in the old old days in the old ways like um like they probably understood that they do need to pay for have an energy exchange for the healers and healing, even without her saying, well, these are my tiered prices, right? But like now I think about, well, you know, I've, I've already talked about my context of coming from underneath the evangelical church roof. Um, and there's a lot of volunteer, 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 you're doing your ministry, you're doing your ministry and it's from your heart. So you don't get necessarily yeah. any energy exchange. So I feel like even with that, that has kind of been set up and like, you know, you're, you're serving and therefore you have, you don't get any money whatsoever, ever. Right. And so I think, um, um, like just the modern ways that we think about spirituality and spiritual leaders and spiritual healers, we think, oh, there's not like an actual product, like there's not like a product that you can hold, therefore I don't need to pay you with money that I can hold, do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I don't yeah. know, that's just, that's just what a comes thought. To, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's, a con it's a conversation. Money is in a whole different podcast. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, I don't want to say the safe answer is both. Um, but I, I feel into it, it. It does feel like it's both because what was coming through is that for me, scarcity, when something is sacred, you recognize the specialness to it, right? And there's more or less words to it, but like you recognize how sacred is the beautiful word to say it. Like I our bodies that. are sacred. Amen. And it, it made me question, you know, someone who's like dealing with chronic illness is why don't we treat our bodies as sacred? You know, why do mm -hmm. we do these things to our bodies? You know, and um, only until like, for me personally, like, for example, I'll pull like when I sprain my ankle or I sprain both ankles in one year, um, <laughs> the scarcity, like the, the scarcity meaning like, how I have to work with one foot to get to the bathroom. You know how struggle city that is? Dude, I bet. <laughs> yeah, and, and you you heal and you, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's, I guess like that's what I'm com it's coming through. And um, there was also a quote in there, I know we can close this out, right? Is like um, how what you're saying about like paying for something tangible or like something that's seen. Yeah, yeah. Um, like how the faith the healer or the healed um is only healed based upon like how much faith they have in their healer which is why a lot of people believed in lola sevia yes she was definitely a babayla but you know what i'm saying like um you know what she did like some of the stories she did 
like she cured breast cancer and her yeah. someone like oh you know like that's yeah. a lot of um mm-hmm. faith and like that would have been a lot of money if you think of like a capitalistic like thought like how much you know oh my gosh yeah to go to to get if you're gonna go through new treatment yeah yeah, yeah. And it says it doesn't even guarantee to save you, right? Wow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for going off trail with me. Oh, anytime. I know we're going to come back. We always come back. We always do. We always do. Your word. What's your word? So (laughs) my word are words. Oh. It's words. Oh, so she it. was. <laughs> so she was talking about how Lola Sibia, uh, in one of her treatment modalities, would she would chew up ginger, which by oh, the, the way, tea-ha. I love gin- Yeah, or the luya luya. Yeah. yeah, I love ginger. By the way, do you love ginger? I love me some ginger. I have grown an appreciation for it. It was like me and cilantro. I didn't yeah. like cilantro growing up, but yeah. I, oh yeah, I always love ginger. Actually, my best friend, she's red a redhead. I'm always like, I love a ginger. Oh, <laughs> I love a good ginger. Anyway, so she she eats ginger and she puts it on specific pressure points of the body, and she blows on it each time and makes the sign of the cross. Um. This is one of her treatment modalities. And so sometimes she could sense evil spirits. What page are you on, sis? Sorry. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so the people can follow along at home. Page 141. One, all right. Yeah. Ah, so- it was on the same page anyway. Oh, hey. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hey. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> on the, at the end of the second chapter, I mean, second paragraph on page 141, she mm-hmm. said, it says Lola Sebia would mutter, Okay, I'm gonna try Lola Sebia. I'm gonna try ancestors. Help me. Palayo kamo mga malain ginhawa, which means mm, that was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, thank you. Which means go away, evil spirits. Go away Shoot. from there, huh? How come you are here? How come you are here? How come Let you are one. here? How come you're here again? Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so I really, uh, I really understand the power of words, right? Mm-hmm. Throat chakra stuff. And so one of the things that I learned while I was under the church's roof, well, we would do things like um, going to people's houses and like uh cl- cl- cleanse basically yeah, yeah. without yeah. smudging we would use words you'd be like go away in the name of jesus this house is covered by the blood of jesus right mm. um but i'm just realizing like like we're powerful each of us individually and i'm not saying go pick a fight with evil spirits that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is that mm-hmm. um that what she did was legit like she was just you know she had her certain things that certain rituals that she did with the ginger and she basically spoke to the uh afflictions or the evil spirits and told them to go away go away go away and they and Mm -hmm. they did and they did and they did so so it is and so it is Amen. Ashanti. <laughs> Shout out to you, V. Are you yeah. listening? Ashanti. <laughs> Jaru. Jaru. Inside joke. Well with V. At Well with V. Shout out to you, sis, for her healing services. Holla to her. And her coaching services. Yeah, and coaching. Yes. And she any cool. of the sisters at the retreat. Conscious Mother at Conscious Mother um but yeah we had a retreat and she was just, that was her joke and we were all laughing you had to be there that's what yeah. they call it is that why they call it inside jokes because you had to be there <laughs> yeah but they still- just call it, it had you had to be their joke <laughs> that, that, <laughs> but that's still funny you know i think it's funny anyway okay 
Somebody okay. out there is gonna think that's hilarious. I know. Somebody thank you that one currently thank laughing. You that person. And yeah, persons. And, thank you, yeah. persons out yeah. there. And that's what we did that for. That's joke. That's that joke. That came was for spirit. you because yeah. you are in the right space. <laughs> You're meant to be here with yes. us. Some someone was asking for a sign from spirit. <laughs> here it is. Here it is. Sean. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is why we like have studied. This is why we have study breaks, y'all. Because we, I know we be joking a lot forever. Yeah. Okay, but yes, I. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? If not, that's all I wanted to share, and I feel complete. Yeah, it was awesome. All I can say is like I wish I could get a tie hop or a, a lua lua luya luya because that's what they call. It's a ginger in Tagalog, right? Luya. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wish I could get that every day. <laughs> at least <a> weekly <laughs> like to to somebody crush ginger and put it on your yeah t- take out my afflictions and tell the evil spirits to go away you i'm tired do, of them you you could do it you chew up your own i know I'm, put it on your own foot you say the you, you say the word you say right but you say you tell your body what to do you I'm tell your these- that's right <laughs> you tell your body what to do you, you i'm gonna tell the spirits leave me alone yeah. i say that too I say that too when I'm when I when I'm like, all right, Lola, I know you're here. Did you see evil spirits? Because you left the lights on all the time, and my dad would say like, here goes Lola, like she's scared of the dark, scared Aww. her own shadow. And I was like, I mean, if you had your like psychic powers and you were didn't want to own them, that's fine. I understand that. And I was like, but I don't want no spirits coming to me. No, they're not t- going to my body. Mm-hmm. Like if you want to flip the lights on, fine, mm-hmm. but. Nah, don't don't play with me. Nah. <laughs> I don't want to play. Like nah, that. you gotta go. Uh, you gotta go. What is it? Palayo, come on, maga. Manga malain ginhawa. Ginhawa. I'm gonna light my thing and 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 say amen. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lola. So my Lola, um, she used to live with us. I think everybody's Lola lived with them for a hot second, right? Yeah. And she would, so she would watch me when my parents would go somewhere or work or whatever. And I remember when she was first, when she first um, was staying with us, she was she putting me to bed and she told me to turn off the light. But what, instead of turn off, what did she say? She said, kill the light, kill the light. Kill the light. <laughs> kill the light. Turn. Turn the light, kill the light, huh? Kill the light. What do they say? Um, open the light. <laughs> open. I'm like, how do you open a light? And I remember well, I would say that. My parents would be like, shut up, you little smart girl. I know. <laughs> oh, Lola. But you don't open thinking. lights, though. You turn it Okay. Yeah, okay. but that's Here's the, story. this the, ga- it's the, it's the, what is it called? The um, translation. Yeah. yeah so. Okay. Anyway, I just felt like saying that since this story was about Lola's. I'm sure everybody's no. Lola has a story like that, right? Where we're we like, her, oh, Lola. Lola, you're so funny. Why you say it like that? So. It's not even my Lola, though. It's my girl. It's my mom. She be, I love you, mom. Love you, mommy. But <laughs> I need to turn off. The, she's like, you know what I mean? Like, just like, don't play with me. Like, don't tease me about my accent <laughs> yeah. or like, yeah. yeah. Um, I grew up in Philippines. Okay, little right. American daughter. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you right. <laughs> you right. That's gangster AF. I you know. Come Sorry, I, I stopped. I stopped teasing her about it. Yeah. So get that me? Um. Okay. Okay. So, do you feel complete? I do. Thank you. Okay. So quotes. Um. Man, I had to, but I didn't. And they're actually not even from Tito Cerez's language, but he he quoted them. I loved it. This chapter was a favorite to me. I must say that. Because my heart is really tender for Lola's, you know. And, um, you know, I would love to hear more stories about, like, you know, like, grandma. And I love how some of them called, like, her telling them she used to play baseball. I was like, oh, wow. I know. She played baseball before. She did all this, like, ginger, Lana creating. Yeah, before she was, like, a priestess, healer, working right. with a spirit doctor person 
and I love girl I think she was like all she told her kids was like the spirit doctor was rich yeah <laughs> I wrote in there I was like is that why all of our moms wanted us to become doctors because even the spirit doctors are rich <laughs> anyway right. anyway right. okay what and was also, your well, go ahead go ahead no nah, I don't want to go that's a okay. rabbit hole I want to start okay. I don't want to go on a tangent but all right yeah what is rich though you know what, what is, is currency that's mm -hmm. what we were what is energy exchange that is like that's what we were honey. talking about honey right. yes but okay. she was like listen my spiritual doctor zaddy he knows i listen i do what he says <laughs> and it heals people yeah and i love her even more a little sevia because she wasn't like yeah i made hell of a you know but that's a money wound too, I think in some way, because it's like, we're deserving of money, you know? Oh, it's um, our birthright. Abundance is my birthright. Yeah. And so I think earlier we were talking about come out the Kamote and like all the other ways she was getting paid, like mm -hmm. that was her abundance, like people paying her and things like she didn't, because eventually you're going to go to the, you're going to go to the store and buy tomatoes. Eventually you're going to go to the store and you're going to need to buy a chicken, you know, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. not the store, but <laughs> the village, the market, the village, the farmer, the farmer, the, the farmer's market. Ooh, farmer's market. Um, am I hella millennial to say that? Yes. Yeah, but that's who we are, so. <laughs> right. I got my side um, part. That's part of like the, I feel like the work, I think decolonizing is like integrating your Filipino roots and Come your on. American roots. Come on, yes. And that's why I was like, dang, there's shadows yeah. on both sides. You know yes. what I mean? So, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it's okay. It's it's timing. What is time though? But it's that's my question. It's a process. It's just it's part of the remembrance. Mm -hmm. it's part of the remembrance of who we are, what we came here to do. Mm -hmm. But take your time. Like telling myself that. I tell myself that. Yes. Give yourself permission. You tell. <laughs> you tell yourself what to do. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So yeah, 144 is the quote I took, I highlighted. And it's actually, again, referring back to Amy Suzera, the author, Suzara. I love how her name is like Amy, Amy's in Amy. I know. Did you notice that, sis? Yeah. A um, Babylon, oh, Babylon Rising. And I was like, oh, my Instagram, Steph.inrising. Um, oh. I know, right? The time. Or is it just, is it coincidence? I don't believe in coincidences anymore. Come on. No more. So page 144, amen. Um, she, Tito Serez quoted, I'm, I'm Amy, Amy. I'm going to say I'm Amy. I think it's Amy. It's Amy. It's Amy. Um, okay. So she paints, he said, she paints a wonderful portrait of the violin as an example of transcendent humanity infused with spirituality. The Babylon, unlike the modern figures of female spirituality and womanhood, the Virgin Mary, the Catholic nun, or the prayerful self-sacrificial mother, reminds us of the complexity of the human self. While women may look to the pure and devout Virgin Mary as the model of ideal womanhood, or the converted prostitute, Mary Magdalene, who, to remind them, I don't like that word, but it's fine. To remind <laughs> us of what not to do with our bodies. I don't like that either, because yeah, there's same. three sides to the story. I felt away, but yes. The Babylon, the Babylon offers an alternative of transcendent humanity infused with spirituality. She reminds us that our connection to earth and life means not abandoning one polarity for the other not in choosing chastity over physical pleasure, domesticity over wildness, or feminine over masculine, but in, in embracing elements of both. And, yes, both and. Amen. Like the Hindu goddess Durga, who in her calm form is the gleaming warrioress, but in her powerful form is the untamed and vulgar destroyer Kali, the Babylon embodies beauty with ugliness and life with death. She is a mirror of the complexities of our universe and an inspiration to find balance between extremes. Whoa, come on. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, Kali. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can't wait. Yeah. So anyway, um, why did you, why did this, why did you pick this quote? Why did it strike you? Um, I just, I just continue to love how Mm -hmm. folks are remembering that there's multiple truths that can exist in this vast space of life that we are given to live, you know, and um, in this universe (laughs) and, you know, honoring the polarities and and recognizing that both can exist and you can still, you could still love that story, that tale, that person, you know, um, because it, it encompasses both. And so I think that in context to Babylon, how we're seeing over and over that, you know, it's, it's, they are humans and they can, they're very, very, very spiritual. They very, very much have opened their connection to the Mm -hmm. divine and have allowed that to come through. And, um, you know, our colonization programming tells us that that's non-existent, that that doesn't exist. Um, one of my teachers the other day was like, there's a freaking ball of fire in the sky that we call the sun. And no one believes that that's magical. Like <laughs> no one believes that that's magic, you know? Right. Like, that is magic. What? It's like, yeah. how does this ball of fire exist in the sky? Mm-hmm. Sure. You can say all the science, whatever, but like, there's a higher, there's some things like our consciousness just can't embody. And so that's why I think the both and paradox is really beautiful because it's like, but Bylan can be human and, and spiritual, like very much like these healing modalities she did and these stories she has, like, like you got to go through a lot of like, isn't it more work to lie about things than to just be truthful about it? You know, mm. so, um, Anyways, and I actually, I didn't even know that Kali's calm form was Durga. Yeah. And that her, yeah, her destructive form was Kali. And then I, okay, side note, just a side 30 second tangent. I Let's just go. finished Sailor. I just finished Sailor Moon. Yeah, you did. On Hulu. Yeah, you did. It's on Hulu. Okay. I love Sailor Moon. And the last <laughs> season, the last season, um, I won't give it all away, but- there's new characters that transform. And when they transform, they go from mm-hmm. male to female. And then they fight in female form, but then they exist on earth as man, as men. Oh, very interesting. So it brings up the androgyny topic and it brings up this both and, and then it brings up this masculine feminine, you know, that we so all when, have. So when they fought and they were warriors and magical, they mm-hmm. were women. Very interesting. Girl. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, I want so, to love that. I love it. I love a both and situation. That's what life is because it's it's the whole of the thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how are you going to know? How are you going to know, calm, if you don't know, like, the opposite of it, like chaos? You know, how are you going to know? beauty without ugliness, ugliness, life without death, what would be the contrast? How would we understand it? But that's a whole different topic. But yeah, as within, so without. Yeah. Yeah. So beautiful, sis. Thank Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. What was your Okay, again, your assignment? assignment, Huh? What's your (laughs) What's your essay? (laughs) Huh? Um, so mine was from Tito Ceres. I was going to call him Tito like I know him. Uh, and I just love at at the end of his, at, at the end of this chapter, how he talks about he is in Germany and he is actually experiencing debilitating body aches and pains that have baffled even the best doctors in Germany. And as he was writing this for uh, the compilation for this 
uh, for Tita Lenny and this compilation of Bob Island, uh, for the Bob Island book, he says that um, what I had not anticipated was a tremendous surge of healing energies that would come from the writing of this story. This was on page 152. You and read then, my mind. Oh my gosh. Okay. And, and then so um, uh, I'll just read what he wrote. He said at the last paragraph, he said, on my you do it dawned on me that Lola might indeed have been touching me through Lenny, using her as an agent for my own healing. Throughout the writing of the story, Lenny hovered with my grandmother on the fringes of my consciousness, showering me with vital positive energies and urging me on when I slowed down by unfathomable when I was slowed down by unfathomable loneliness. Mm -hmm. For nurturing in every way. Lola would do anything to protect and heal her own, her drive so strong it would transcend time and space, even life and death. To this day, although she has passed over into another world, my siblings and I always know when she is reaching out to touch us with her loving ministrations. Writing the story allowed me to write myself back into the world and Lola slash Lenny are leading the way. It is the beginning of my way of my journey home. Writing Lola's story has brought profound healing into my own life. And I just, oh man. So I love, I honed in on what he said. And I loved this paragraph and this sentiment because Lola Sebia is ancestor goals for me like right you, right you know what i'm saying like if my grandchildren are hurting or whatever you best believe i would like to come <laughs> transcend space and time because what is time right what is time um mm -hmm. but no but seriously but like her I'm essence like yeah her essence like if you think of time is not linear but it's all happening at the same time mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that her essence and her healing energies and her love would transcend all of that yes. and would know yes. when her grandson or granddaughter or her, you know, her family would mm -hmm. need something. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. And that she would just show up mm -hmm. use in the real world, in the tangible real world, using other people, other mm -hmm. connections. Right. And then through her, he was just writing about her memory and yeah. he, he was healed like wow lola yeah. sebia yeah like you are strong like she sent him like a like a a sting of like love yeah. frequency and it like went through all the timelines and, the, yeah. and it landed into his hands as he types yeah and the energy of it right and because you can tell that she did all this because of love you know, and she really did love her, this, the stories that, um, like, I think it was Amor or Jovi talk, uh, talked about, like, how they would sit on the porch with Lola and, like, just rock on the, on, like, sing songs and, you know, about, and how one of them when like, she, when she, uh, was he, oh, jo one of yeah. them came home yeah. and had, like, a, like, a dark shadow thing. Yeah! That's that's why I was like, ooh, okay. And she and she knew she she was waiting. She she knew something was about to come come through, and then she said, "Okay, come on, Ziggy, you lie down over here." I'm sorry. Then she said that she said that the the words you said earlier. Yeah. Yeah, she said the words, and she did the ways, yeah. and She's, that's because of love. Ancestor goals AF. And I also wonder, like, did she ever punish her kids? I don't know. It said that that she. I think one of them said that they never. She never, never got mad. Raised her voice. Are you kidding me? Like, yeah. She yeah. was. Love, she was. I love my grandparents. <laughs> I know. I love my grandparents, but she could have taught them how to. If if she existed, and she does, she does, in some capacity, right? She could have created capitalism would have my capitalism mind was like, she could have created a course for Lola's and Lolo's <laughs> how to not beat their grandkids <laughs> when they're mad at them. 
Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I Lola know, said it was a I got followed a lot. So mm-hmm. maybe maybe I was really a badass kid, but you know, like I admire her generosity. <laughs> Not like wanting to like Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Goals. Yeah. Ancestor goals for real. Just like just love. Just the love. Her love was so strong. She's not even on the physical earth anymore. And she said, let me, let me just help you out right quick. Yeah. You know, and just, mm-hmm. yeah. And just the way he ends the chapter, cause I guess they're, they had to sell the family home. There was some like drama, land drama, gold drama, money drama back home. Oh. I mean, wh- who doesn't have that back home? And am I, you know what I'm saying? That, that, res- <laughs> that hits you here too. Cause I yeah. was like, yo, that shit. Yeah. Yup. Yeah. That shit. It's happening legit like mm-hmm. and um one one line he did say on the same page it's like a paragraph down it was like often burdened burdened by the weight of memories i would find myself in emotional dead ends unable to proceed meaning to like write mm-hmm. and for me yeah that's what happened that got me to cacao i was like there's a heart blockage here i need mm-hmm. support and so i was like what plant is known for that and really? then I learned from my teacher. Yep. And then I learned from him. And then oh. I've been sitting with the medicine for a couple, it's like months now. Yeah. yeah months, so, months. wow, I didn't know that. I didn't so know that, that led you there. Yeah. I remember we were writing our um, stories for the yeah. chakras. Yeah. The heart, I stopped. I yeah. haven't written since because I was like, this is a lot. There's a lot here. There's a lot of stagnancy. There's a lot of, um, stuff I need to unpack. So yeah, sis. Yeah. Power of power of the spiritual world, man. I'm like, if, if, if you're in on board, like I get it, but I get it, but I don't because it's all spiritual. I mean, if you think about it, like you, you're talking about the sun, like, oh, that's not magical. Like gravity, like fucking gravity holding you down to a planet that's spinning infinitely spinning in the universe well that, yeah <laughs> so it's like that's just science but i mean if you go so far into science you hit magic and you go far into magic you hit science it's all the same it's, mm, tell them it's all tell the same em. eventually it tell them you, you you tell them you tell them sis <laughs> it comes them back around it you comes plant the seeds yeah, it comes back around. So like, and, mm-hmm. and, and even if you don't want to be if, if magic scares you, the word magic scares you, just be in wonder, okay, of the sun, okay, blah, 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 we can explain it, we have the knowledge to explain how it works. But like, dude, the sun, though, like, if you just think even about the knowledge that we know, like, that is a miracle, right? miraculous magical whatever you want to call all it all of them and both scientific and. Sci- yes all. all both and that's what i'm saying most of life is both and yes <sighs> so yes. anyway and we get to experience that if you choose to but some people don't and that's okay and that's okay that everybody every we want to acknowledge that everybody is consciously where they need to be like legit Same. you know so yes so yeah man i feel lola sebia i didn't even know her but i feel her as soon as we started talking about her i was like okay respect to you what a gentle soul like yeah and so strong (laughs) and her legacy and her legacy like we're we're talking about her no i know so in a way you know i won't say i want to call this direct ancestors but our ancestors led us to her mm-hmm. so we're all we're all human this is mm-hmm. going down the rabbit hole mm-hmm. for the, the the bigger meta picture right but yeah yeah so. the race the the ethnicity the just how we're all tied and and this book landing in our hands and then Mm-hmm. Um, hearing the pro- sort of like a little snippet, like the process Tita Lenny went through to ca- call upon these writers to share their stories. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I thought that was magical in itself. Like mm-hmm. how 
um, Tito Ceres, Ceres, um, just like connected with Tito Lenny. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Like he lives in Germany. Germany. I know. The World Wide Web. That's how that's, that's part of, that's one of the pros I'm like thankful we, um, definitely. You know, have the internet. Yeah. How was I supposed to meet you this lifetime? I know. I literally had that thought. I was like, I think it was like the other day. It was a random. I was like, thank God for the internet. Cause I wouldn't have met. I wouldn't have met you. I'd be yeah. like, you would have existed in Ohio and you just would have lived your life. I would have like, been so sad and lonely. <laughs> girl. And I thought of you yesterday because there was a presenter. She's, she's Mestiza. Mm -hmm. She's half Filipina, half um, white. And she talked about assimilating to, as ways of survival. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up and I was like, damn, like sis was just talking about that. And I see how that's, that's very apparent. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what I needed to do to survive mentally, emotionally. Right. But mm -hmm. it's a little bit, I always wanted to be Mestiza because I understood it, it, even without articulating it, I understood that it would be easier for me to assimilate here. Because if I was just a little bit more white presenting, if I my nose was a little straighter, you know, and if my hair was just a little bit lighter, you know, so, um, yeah. If I look like my daughter, my daughter's beautiful, but she, she looks mestiza, even though she's 75, like, I don't know, what is math? But she's like mostly Filipina. And then my son, he looks mostly Filipina. He looks... He looks straight up like Filipino. Filipino. Yeah. Yeah. I always tell them they don't understand what I'm saying. But I tell them, I'm like, I tell my daughter, I'm like, I have gifted you <laughs> with the privilege. And son, I have gifted you with the struggle. Aww. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. But it's a gift. It's a gift, though. It's a gift. But it's they don't, I just, I say it jokingly. They don't know what I'm saying. I say crazy stuff. Yeah, They're just yeah. like, okay, mom. They'll understand one day. They will. They will. But yeah, I mean that's 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 so interesting. And I know we're gonna like close here soon, but yeah. Um yeah, I mean I think growing up for me, I swam and you know, like that words or spells are also validation and mm -hmm. you know, yes, you don't need validation, but I was I was a teenager, a young girl, and I remember like I was tan as hell because I swam. Yeah, I came back from like a meal. I was walking through the mall with my friends, and you know this group of guys was like Morena Thorn, and I was like, huh, you know. And <laughs> later, my mom was like, they were complimenting your skin, BB. Let's call me BB. Yeah. Um, and she was like, you have beautiful brown skin, and I was like, okay, cool, you know, like, um, that's why I didn't understand when sometimes like she'd come back from the Philippines and they'd be like whitening deodorants and like yeah. face wash and stuff. And I was like, I thought, yeah. I, I thought my skin was pretty. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> you know? Yeah, dude. And I, when I got dark, when I swam, like growing yeah. up, I was yeah. like, I like, I like it. So oh my gosh, I hate it. I was hella dark. When I was a teenager, I hated my skin in the summertime. I remember, uh, I don't know. I was coming, I was in the bath like it was church because I grew up in church and I was in the bathroom with this some girl from youth group and I mentioned something how it was the end of summer so my my skin was or it was like fall and so my skin had lost like the summer color and I was like oh I'm getting lighter because I wanted to be lighter mm -hmm. and she looks at me she's like you're the darkest person I know though <laughs> how old were you I was fucking seven, 16, 15, 16. Oh, girl. I know. You and were I, in the Bay, and you had been in, like, I don't know. Some places, you know, some of them were smack. Like, what'd you say? No, I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's. No. But that is. Well, that is. That is the, that. Oh. Well, thanks mm -hmm. for listening. Well, thank you for listening. I'm sure that is not um, a, that is not an experience that other people haven't had people um brown people in the midwest specifically yeah, so yeah i acknowledge that i acknowledge the the it only took one t comment growing up that i remember mm -hmm. you know being complimented for my brown skin i was like thank you yeah. you know oh my and god I, I mean i hung around 
this, you know, I had, I had a diverse set of friends. So this sounds um, colorblind, but I, I just was like, all colors are cool, you know? So um, yeah, it was never like a, like, I wish I was darker. I wish I was lighter. Yeah. I will say though, like <laughs> what I do when my, you know, we have lighter parts of our body and I'm like, I wish it was all one color. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh. uh-huh. body image, we haven't even gotten to that. That's right? going to be the next study, study, study break. break. Yeah. Study um, break. But yeah, I'm like, how do I get this body part to like match the other body, this body part. part? This body part, you yeah. know? <laughs> but oh, wow, that was a tangent. I know. Yes, but I love thing. it. It's okay. It's all right. Thank you for hanging with us, y'all. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, I feel complete. Do you have anything else you'd like to add about the chapter or in Lola Sebia? Nah, it was beautiful. It was, yeah. I think it was, um, in a way, like a full circle for me to really um, appreciate. I wouldn't say I'm like, you know, ancestral healing and all that, but to really be in super reverence and recognizing and appreciating the resources and the people in my life now that are very reminiscent that can provide, Mm -hmm. you know, context to like these things, Mm -hmm. these stories, because Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up like necessarily having my parents, like my grandma telling me like, do this, like cut up these things. Like they're good for Hilot or stuff like that. And the most we had was Vicks. I wanted to say that earlier. (laughs) Remember I told you the yeah, first yeah, episode. Yeah. Vix was mama's um remedy. Well my my Lola, she she did drink garlic water. She straight up put garlic in her water and drank it. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Sis. What? Did you wow. Grandma- well, no, after um something was activated in me in these past couple like year or two, say that. Um, but I was like, yeah, I'll just when I feel sickies, I'll make ginger garlic i'll put that with lemon water I'll yeah blend it and just down that shit yeah she would Nasty just like hell. put like just like go cloves of garlic peeled garlic in her water and just like be drinking it like she's trying to ward off vampires or something. <laughs> yeah i learned yesterday that um garlic flowers have medicine too so oh, everything has medicine i know yeah so. including this podcast <laughs> oh uh, yes <laughs> we hope we hope and that's okay if it doesn't but as we end our conversation yes and close out this container with gratitude again we bring recognition and honor to all the seen and unseen forces that guided us here in this moment thank you for joining our conversation and as we end we want to leave you with a blessing May you remember your connection to your body, your lands, your home, also known as Mother Earth, and all her abundance when you feel lost or lack. May you hear through life's daily chaos that inner voice of your own heart-centered pakiramdam and the voices of your own ancestors, especially our beloved Lolas. For as Tito Ceres says, A grandmother's love is the invisible woof that keeps the fabric of civilization from coming apart. And thus reminding us that through it all, that love is within us and we are always worthy, deeply held and supported. When you are weary, may you know that God, the divine is only a breath away. Mm -hmm. May Kapwa grow in your heart. And until we meet again, may you know that whatever happens, all is and will be well, and you are loved. In God, goddesses' names, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. And so it is. Thanks, sis. Back at you. And to all you viewers. So, scene. <laughs> is that how they both look like? <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, y'all. Yes. yes. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. Okay. And scene. And Vogue. That one was good. I felt it. Did you feel it? 
felt it. Okay. <laughs> Yay.